And so I just came to him one day and just said, what would you think about me carrying a baby for somebody who's having a hard time carrying babies? Like I didn't, we didn't even really know what the word surrogate was uh-huh. even at that point. It was so new. And he's, he's so kind and wise and stable. He's, he just said, simply said, well, what does that mean? What does that look like? And I'm like, I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Hey guys, my guest today is so amazing. Tiffany Jo Baker is a mom of two teen girls, but she's a surrogate mom who's delivered five babies for three families dealing with infertility. She is the podcast host of All The Things TV. She's author of a devotional. She's a strategizer who helps women find their purpose. You are going to love all our interview today. And hey, don't forget, coaching is open and our Patreon community is open as well. So go to compare to who.me slash coaching or compare to who.me slash podcast to find out everything you need to know. Welcome to Compare to Who, the podcast to help you make peace with your body so you can savor God's rest and feel his love. If you're tired of fighting body image the world's way, Compare to Who is the show for you. You've likely heard lots of talk about loving your body, but my goal is different. Striving to fall in love with stretch marks and cellulite is a little silly to me. Instead, I want to encourage you and remind you with the truth of scripture that you are seen, you are known, and you are loved no matter what your size or shape. Here, the pressure is off. If you're looking for real talk, biblical encouragement, and regular reminders that God loves you and you're not alone, you've come to the right place. I hope you enjoy today's show and hey, tell a friend about it. Tiffany Joe, thank you so much for being on the Compared to Who show today. Oh, Heather, I am just thrilled to be here. Thank you. Well, you're thrilled to be here. You know what we're going to talk about, right? Uh, I do. <laughs> it's going to be real and raw. And I think it's going to be a great conversation. Yeah. Okay. So we both crossed the 40 line and we both had babies in our Mm thirties and you actually, you went, you went above and beyond, (laughs) I'd say, (laughs) um, because most of the women I talk to, uh, you know, are concerned or were concerned about having babies, what it would do to their body. And that was for their own children. Mm -hmm. You have been a surrogate mom, which just like, I want to give you a big hug from Austin (laughs) to Dallas. Okay. Um, But Hey, we just share your story. Just like, let us get to know you a little bit. And then we're going to dig into the heart of body after baby and, you know, kind of how we process what pregnancy does and how it changes our bodies. But first let's, let's get to know you. Tell me about you and how you became a surrogate mom. Like I thought that's an interesting story to me too. So to dig in, tell us about Tiffany Jo Baker. Oh my goodness. Okay. Where to start? Well, I am, I like to say I'm a caffeinated mom of two teenage girls. So we have a 16 and 18 year old, uh, but I've also been a surrogate mom and carried five babies for three families dealing with infertility. And two of those pregnancies were two sets of twins. Wow. Right. (laughs) So seven babies, five pregnancies, and I'm still caring for two. It's kind of like a little riddle that if you want to want to go there. Um, But you know, how did I get into this? Momming is my most favorite and most challenging role that I have. And one day we were, my husband and I were youth pastors. We, we've been in ministries one way, shape or form for the last 21 years. And I was also, um, our church preschool director. Okay. And I came in to share the announcement that I was pregnant with our second. And as I was sharing that with my friends and, and fellow preschool workers, I saw my friend across the circle. Mm-hmm. And when I shared that we were pregnant with our second I saw that look of joy and pain flash across mm-hmm. her face all at the same time. Yeah. And in that moment, God spoke a couple of things to my heart. One, I've given you a gift. Mm-hmm. And that's where that first, that seed planted of being a surrogate. And then the second thing he told me was she's struggling with infertility because mm-hmm. she had never verbalized that. And I never, yeah. I never even considered that back then. Yeah. And so that's really how the surrogacy journey started. Of course, it was years in the process of decision-making and walking it out and, and um, getting matched with couples and, and how that all works. But that was the initial seed that God planted, but never in a million yeah. years would I thought that's how he wanted to use Tiffany Joe. 
Yeah. Okay. So can, can I ask some questions about Absolutely. all that? Cause yes. I'm curious and I'm sure yes. someone listening is curious. So did you know, so you didn't, you weren't a surrogate for friends. You were, you worked through. I worked through a surrogacy agency. Okay. Yes. Which was at the time it was a, a small boutique surrogate agency here in the Dallas Fort Worth area that were Christian, um, which is very hard to find in the surrogate mm-hmm. world. Um, unfortunately we had a bad experience with that agency. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. as just the roller coaster ride of, of fertility, um, mm-hmm. and, and people. Right. Um, but yeah, I worked with, it's kind of like a dating matching service okay. type relationship where you okay. fill out this long, long questionnaire. They fill out a questionnaire. The agency director tries to show some potential matches. Okay. And then we start this process of talking to one another and deciding if we're a good fit for one another. Okay. And then how did your husband feel about this? Because, <laughs> because I, I'll, I'll just straight up, like I get emails from women who say, my husband doesn't want me to have another baby because of what yeah. it's going to do to my body. Mm-hmm. So, and, you know, and it's, it's heartbreaking, but that's kind of the culture we're in right now. Right. So uh, yeah. How does your husband handle it? He, so he is, he's used to me being an idea person. I'm like this. I have, I have all these great ideas and things that I want to do and I want us to do and things, but I've learned how to present my ideas to my husband, how to package them in a way that they're more palatable. And so I just came to him one day and just said, what would you think about me carrying a baby for somebody who's having a hard time carrying babies? Like I didn't, we didn't even really know what the word surrogate was uh-huh. even at that point. It was so new. And he's, he's so kind and wise and stable. He's he just said, simply said, well, what does that mean? What does that look like? And I'm like, I don't know, but I'm going to find out. And that was like the initial conversation that we had. And then we just kind of went through a fact finding journey and i um, waiting for God's timing in it. Once we knew that the call was there and then waiting for the timing as we pursued it, but he's the MVP man. He came to all of the transfers took off work, was with me in the hospital. Even one time we delivered on father's day weekend. So he spent Father's Day weekend in the hospital at the hospital with me helping wow. another man become a father. Wow. Your husband is a hero too. You both yes. are. <laughs> but, me, but yes. But I mean, like, so just like I was horrible my first three months of pregnancy. Now I I never got sick. Mm-hmm. And we have four kids and we had four in just about five years, mm-hmm. no twins. So I was pregnant or breastfeeding for mm-hmm. like five years straight. We actually had a miscarriage in between number two and number three. So I totally understand the pain mm-hmm. involved there. If anyone listening, if that was your experience, like that, it hurts no matter when you have the miscarriage, it hurts. Yeah, absolutely. I had four kids in five years, no twins. We just boom, 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 boom. And that first three months of pregnancy, I, my husband had a name for it. And I can't remember what it was like the dark days, or something, <laughs> something ominous like that, where he was just like, I'm staying out of your way. Yeah. And then he was, he like knew he was conditioned. He knew like second trimester was going to be good. And so he was like, all ready for that. Like how many days left till second trimester and then third trimester, he knew it was going to be hit or miss. Right. And, and so like, just trying to imagine my husband being like, yeah, sure. You can carry a baby for mm-hmm. someone else. And I loved being pregnant. I really didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't mind being pregnant. I wasn't sick. Um, I did have gestational diabetes with baby number three. And so that was a pain in the tushy, <laughs> but, um, but aside from that, like pregnancy wasn't that hard for me. And, you know, and, and I, I think I have a heart similar to yours. Like I, it, it hurts me to watch friends walk mm-hmm. through infertility. It, mm-hmm. It's, and, and I think, especially in this audience, you know, the, the research connecting disordered eating, eating disorders to infertility is clear. And, and so I know that there's a lot of women probably listening today that that's a struggle for them. So I think mm-hmm. this is probably, um, maybe interesting to even hear about mm-hmm. the possibility of a surrogate, but, um, but yeah, I, there's, there's so much I could ask you a hundred questions about surrogacy, but, but then we would miss what we're going to talk about today, which is the body mm-hmm. side of things. So mm-hmm. it was body image ever a struggle for you? Or were you just like, oh, whatever I'm good. Pre like pre-pregnancy. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah. Um, so pre-pregnancy, I would say a minimal amount of body image struggle, not, Mm -hmm. not anything drastic. Um, but like I even went into pregnancy. I remember with, with our first, 
my good friend had her baby first. And so I kind of was looking through pregnancy through how she went through it. Like, and she literally went back into her pre-pregnancy clothes in the hospital. Wow. So me (laughs) not knowing anything, I packed pre-pregnancy clothes to go to the hospital. And I had a rude awakening (laughs) when I was leaving the hospital, when I had to put back on the maternity clothes that I came in with, Mm -hmm. because that's all I had. Mm -hmm. So I think that was my first like indicator um, that, that pregnancy looks different on everybody Mm -hmm. and the results of it are different, but definitely, I think even being a surrogate adds an extra layer to it because once you're done delivering the baby, you're not carrying around an infant, right? But your body's still carrying the aftermath of having just delivered. Right. And still looking six months pregnant, coming out of the hospital for however long that lasts, they were all different. Um, And then add on to that because of all those um, back-to-back pregnancies and and carrying two sets of twins, I developed diastasis recti, which is ab separation. Mm -hmm. So my insides are literally pushing out of my stomach. There's an ab separation. So my insides are Mm -hmm. pushing out. So I look pregnant. I'm four years post my last pregnancy, I literally just had somebody ask me Tuesday night if I was pregnant. <laughs> Still. Uh, why, Still. Why do people ask that question? They why do people ask that question? <laughs> That's like, really don't ask people when they're going to have kids or if they're pregnant. <laughs> right. Like those are two no-nos. Um so there, there's still the, the, the effects of the diastasis recti. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, in being in their 40s stomach fat, this loves to hang out there. Mm -hmm. Um, so there, there's definitely still some body image things there that are compounded by, I didn't have those when I just had my babies, Mm -hmm. but then when I, I jumped into the surrogacy babies kind of compounded and, and added to the body image. Well, and you had your surrogacy babies later. So you were in your, how, how old were you when you started becoming a surrogate? Um, so that was 10 years ago. So I was 33. Okay. And I, I just, 33. Asked, I just did one of those questions that you're not supposed to ask. Them. <laughs> I'm like, we should never tell anyone they're pregnant. Oh, how old are you? <laughs> so anyway, no, it's all Pardon good. The hypocrisy. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. But no, I know you and I had talked like you were in your yeah. 30s. Right? Yes, and you my said, last one was 39. So mm-hmm. it's different to have a baby different. at 39 than it is to have a baby at 29 mm-hmm. or yeah. 25. Or yes, my first 18. one was 24. So I've been having babies 24 to 39. Wow. Wow. I'm, mm-hmm. I, well, I mean, I still, you just, you get a big old hug from Austin <laughs> and pat on the back for, for doing that. I think that's amazing. So many women listening would cash that out as you sacrificed your body for someone else's baby. Mm -hmm. And I've been kind of wrestling that word sacrifice, right? Because Mm -hmm. I've heard that a lot, just like, Mm -hmm. well, moms sacrifice their bodies to have a baby. And so for you, it's like extra sacrifice. Like you willingly walked into sacrifice to have a baby. But I just wonder if that's, I wonder if that's the right language. Mm -hmm. Like in some ways, you know, yes, we, as a mom, we have to make lots of sacrifices, right? Like that's a very accurate term, but is sacrificing our body. That kind of means that like, I don't know, to me, the imagery is like, you've given something up that was just so incredible and now you'll never have it again. Mm-hmm. And it's a, a loss instead of a gain, mm-hmm. right? And I don't know. How does that strike you? What, what does yeah. that make you <laughs> Hey, hey there, friend. Have you read The Burden of Better yet? The Burden of Better is my book that's all about comparison, but really it's about how to let go of all of the ideals you have driving the way you think you should look, the way you think your family should be, the way you think your home should be, all the things. If you are looking for someone to take the pressure off and show you a new way to live in Christ, a life filled with grace and not comparison, then you want to read The Burden of Better. So snag a copy today, Amazon, christianbook.com, walmart.com, wherever you get your Christian books, 
grab a copy or download the Kindle copy. And guess what? At the end of this month and at the end of March and at the end of April, we're going to go through the book together. So grab a copy today so you'll be ready for our little virtual podcast book club. Friends, I think this book can change your life. I know so many of you have read Compared to Who, and I'm grateful for that. And it blesses me so much to hear how Compared to Who has worked in your life. But friends, let me tell you, the burden of better will touch you maybe even more than Compared to Who did. So check it out today. Wow. You know, I, I've, I have thought about that. And, and consider that. And I think I go back to anytime God calls us to something mm. that we do, I think there's always a price to be paid. Right. That's good. And so I don't know if I would call that a sacrifice. I would call that a paying the price for the mm. call. Right. You know, Jesus paid the ultimate price. Right. And that was a part of his call, but the gain was so much bigger. Right. You know, when God calls us to start a ministry or a podcast or a business or, or whatever it might be, we do have to lay something down. We do have to pay a price, but is it so worth it? Absolutely. So I don't know that sacrifice is the right word. I don't know that paying the price is the right right word, but I do think there's a give and take in it that God asks us to do. And some people say no, and some people say yes. Some people Mm -hmm. say yes, but still have an attitude about it, a martyr Mm -hmm. victim Mm -hmm. attitude about it. Um, Instead of like Jesus willingly laid his life down right. for the call. I right. think maybe it comes back to our heart and to our motivation um, of, of how willingly we're laying it down. Right. 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 And you know, it just came to my mind and, and I, let me put a disclaimer on this, that this is not, this statement is not intended to shame anyone in any way, but we were talking about infertility And I, you know, and I don't know if someone's struggling with infertility is even going to listen to this episode, to be honest with you, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's going to be billed as body after baby and, you know, Mm -hmm. talk about pregnancy and, and that would just probably be, it may be too painful for someone to even click on. Okay. So, so recognizing that, but just thinking about that woman who desperately longs to have a baby Mm -hmm. and would probably say, I'll take the extra you know, 20 pounds, I'll take the stomach pooch, I'll take whatever new cellulite services to Mm -hmm. have a baby. And then there's those of us on the other side that are like, Oh, I can't believe this is what happened to my body. Mm -hmm. And again, no shame there, but Mm -hmm. I do just wonder if, like you said, that the, the miracle of the call Mm-hmm. If we could focus on the miracle of our call to be a mom, a call mm-hmm. to carry and raise a child and look at the price of it, maybe there, are, you know, maybe your body doesn't look as good as it did when you're 20, but guess what? Babies are no babies. <laughs> it's right. not look as good exactly. as it did when you're 20, right? Living right. a long life. Same thing. Yes. Right. Right. So yeah, I, I just, I wonder mm-hmm. if we, if we could just reframe it as grace. Mm-hmm. Oh, how that could help free us. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that was all like poetic and stuff. Let's, let's get like brass tacks though. Like, oh, mm-hmm. stuff changes. What, what changed for you? Ooh, like body wise. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. well, okay, besides guys- people still asking me if I look pregnant. Yeah. Well, yeah, um, there's that. That's, there's that. <laughs> there's the breasts that no longer are perky. Ooh, yes. Right. <laughs> right the, there with you. We call it the rock in the sock look. <laughs> The tube sock, the rock in the tube sock. Look, um, you know, all those, all those good kind of things, which gravity babies, who knows what all it is, right. but, but things, but things definitely changed. But I think, um, you know, I think back to when I was pregnant, how proud I was of my body. Mm. Like when I was pregnant, I was just proud of what it was doing, um, how it was doing what it was designed to do, which is be a life giver. Right and create life and, and carry life and deliver life. And, and, and then now I look back and I'm like, am I still proud of my body Mm. and what it was able to do in in the purest of forms of of not, not pride, but proud. Right. 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 Um, and I, I think I can honestly, just to be honest, I could say I'm proud of the function Mm. of my body, but I'm not always proud of the form. Mm -hmm. And so I still, I still, I wish I could walk around with a t-shirt that says 
I carried seven babies. That's why I look like this. <laughs> but like, why do I need that? Right. Why do I, thought- I need somebody to right. know what my body has done for me to right. be okay with it? Right. And, and to some extent, I love that you said that because right. Like that's, we all have stories. We all look the way we do because of what has happened to us in our lives. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you can tell people you meet that, you know, you find out they're 10 or 20 years older than, you know, you thought Mm -hmm. they were, or excuse me, 10 or 20 years younger than you thought they were because they've had a hard Mm -hmm. time and, you know, and it shows right. And, and why should we be ashamed of that? Right. Like that's our story. Mm. And, but we have this pressure that our, or this really cultural narrative, right. That, <laughs> that our bodies should look like we've never left the house <laughs> the sun, <laughs> or done anything that could cause us damage. Right. Like ate a French been, fry. Right. right. <laughs> we've been sitting in basements, eating kale <laughs> we're in a very like safe, like bubble right. where we can never get a scar or, yeah. um, you know, a pimple or a, um, you know, a sun mark of any kind, right? Like it's just, mm. it's okay. So I've lived actually, mm-hmm. it's so funny. A friend of mine just had an appendectomy and, mm. and I was like, boy, I don't even know if I would have known like what it feels like. Cause she, she caught it before her appendix ruptured. And I'm like, I don't know if I would have known what that kind of stomach ache feels like. And she's like, oh, well, I'd already had my gallbladder removed and like something else. <laughs> and she's so it's like, oh, okay. Well then you know what organ pain feels like more than the rest of us do, I guess. <laughs> but her like first hmm. statement after that was, yeah, it looks like I have leprosy because I've had so many surgeries on my hmm. stomach and there's so many scars. And, you know, and my response back to her was like, you know, but that's your story. Mm-hmm. Like, like it's okay. Like, why is it not okay for our, ba- our first bodies to tell the story mm-hmm. that we've had babies and why do we need a t-shirt? Right. To use it. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. That's so, that's so beautiful. and such, such a profound thing to think, to really think about, um, you know, getting to that, getting to that place right. where we are, we're continuing to be proud and we can, um, walk with our head held high, not holding in our stomach and, um, literally enjoying the fruits of our labor. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's a good, that's a good quote there. The fruits of our labor Mm -hmm. (laughs) double entendre there. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for listening to this episode. That is part of the spark media network that can now be heard on the edify app. you know, it, it's our story. Yes. Right. But then like with, with, I don't, I don't know. We're so quick to size people up mm-hmm. and assume things about their story from the way they look. Right. Mm-hmm. And this, I mean, my audience were like, yeah, we, we struggle with body image. And I think part of the struggle with body image is we look at people and we think if I looked like that, I would have a different story. Mm-hmm. Right. And so what it's, it's encouragement to think, you know, we need to stop trying to figure out people's stories just by looking at them and really mm-hmm. objectifying them. And we need to dig in deeper because I mean, when people meet you, Tiffany Joe, they've got to be like, Whoa, I didn't know that's so cool. I've never met anyone that's done that. Right. I mean, is that the yeah. response you get? Oh yeah. So many questions, but yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I just, I wonder if it's not an encouragement for us all today, whether you're dealing with body after a baby or not, but just stop and think, you know what? It's really fascinating to get to know someone's story beyond me just assuming their yes. story by what they look like. Yeah. And I think too, for me, I think I give other people more grace and mercy than I give myself. Mm, yeah. I think I'm harder on myself mm-hmm. than I would ever be looking at somebody else or saying so. I don't, yeah. I don't, and, and I could be wrong, but I, when I see somebody else, I'm, I'm not looking at what's wrong. Mm. I'm looking at like, oh, right. that's good. That looks nice. Right. I'm not looking at what's wrong um, because I have grace and mercy for that for everybody mm. else. Right. But for myself, do I always give myself that when I'm right. in a bathing suit or when I'm trying on a <laughs> pair of skinny jeans or whatever it might be? Right. Right. No, we, yeah, we're, we look at ourselves like we're, I don't know. I just, I wrote this recently. So it may be in a book that comes out someday, but you know, like I, the, I remember the reading or hearing about like the jars of clay 
you know, illustration from the New Testament, right? That we are jars of clay. And I interpreted that as like paint your own pottery. Like you're a blank like jar. <laughs> yeah. And then like, it's your job to like, make it pretty, right? Like, mm -hmm. okay, God gave you the jar, but now you've got to like make it something really special, right? And I am lousy at paint your own pottery stuff. Like I never even go pick it up after it's, you know, how you Mm -hmm. They send you the kiln and you got to go back 24 hours later. And I'm like, yeah, you can just throw that away. Thank you so much. I had a great experience. I don't need that hideous thing that I painted. Right. But, but I, I think as Christians, I, I don't think I'm alone in, in that mm -hmm. kind of theology, right. Where it's like, okay, God gave me this jar, but now I've got to make it as beautiful as possible. Mm -hmm. So people love Jesus more or something. I don't know. And then we define beauty as like culture's beauty. I don't know. It's just a big old mess, but something you said in there made me think of that. And now I don't remember what it was that you said that made me go there, but yeah, I, you know, it's, it's interesting. It, it's interesting. The weight that we wear to keep perfecting ourselves, right. Mm -hmm. The, you know, and how uncomfortable it is to be like, you know what? My body doesn't look like it did when I was 20 or 25 or 30, 35, even. <laughs> but it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, tell us what you do now. Cause you do fun stuff now. I do. So I asked, I get to work with, with ministry leaders, entrepreneurs, and multifaceted mamas, helping them birth their dreams, mm. just like I did as a surrogate. And you know, I was asking the Lord, how, what, how does this work? How do I go from being a surrogate to a coach to um, somebody that helps, you know, helps helps women do what they've been called and created to do? And he's he's like Tiffany, it's all the same. He's like, in the kingdom of God, I made some to be hands, some to be feet, and I've made you to be a womb. W O M B. Mm. Wow. And in the kingdom, and that you are a dream carrier, and you help walk women through what I've called and created them to do wow. till they birth their God dreams that I've given them, whether that's a baby, a book or a blog. That's awesome. I help them walk through it. I love it. And I've always referred to my books as my babies. Yes. I mean, it babies. Is, it is yep. so, it is absolutely the case that you are yes. pregnant with a concept Yes, and you are laboring on writing the book or, you know, or yes. starting the podcast or, or starting mm -hmm. the blog or starting the business, right? You labor in yes. that. And then it's birth. And I mean, honestly, I don't know how your experience has been, but it's birth. And you kind of think that that moment of birth is when it's like all over overs might not be the right word, but like the culmination of all this yeah. work. And it's just amazing. And then you're like, Oh no, like now I've got a baby to raise. <laughs> right? Yes, that's exactly. Like, it doesn't end then. It does not end. <laughs> it just kind of like a new phase starts then. Yes. And so the, the illustration is, is perfect. Oh, I, I love that, Tiffany. Well, any last thoughts on, I don't know, anything we talked about today? I would just say, you know, when God saw us in our mother's womb, mm -hmm. He knew exactly what we were going to do. You know, the Bible says he had every day was ordained for us before one of them came to be. And I believe he prophesies over us in the womb, what that yeah. is. Yeah. And so our, our life is, our lives are walking that out. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's, it's a tactic of the enemy to keep us focused on anything but that. Right anything but what God's done in us through us from the hills to the valleys, from the good things and the bad things. He wants us to be focused on what was wrong, yeah. what the lie is, mm -hmm. what didn't happen that we expected to happen. And it's a trap. It's such mm -hmm. a trap. But I, I guess I would just in, in, want to encourage somebody that one of my favorite verses is Psalms 138, 8a. And it okay. says, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Mm -hmm. And so no matter what your story is, no matter what the wound or the scar or the pooch or <laughs> whatever it might be, when you're walking with him, he will fulfill his purpose. And our job is to keep our eyes on him, yeah. not on our bodies after Amen. babies. 
Amen. Fix your eyes off your thighs. Oh, I love it. Yeah. The other, the other thing I say that fits perfectly and it's worth saying again, because someone may not have heard it before, but God has given us everything we need physically mm-hmm. to accomplish his purpose for our lives. Yeah. Right. And that just Amen. is exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Right. Like if God had, if his purpose for me in life was to be this incredible Victoria's secret model, he would have given me a different body (laughs) because right now they're, they're not looking for models. They're not calling like angels are not calling. Nope. Nope. They don't need me on their team. (laughs) So, um, but, but no, like it was quite candidly that discovery, that thought, was a freedom Mm -hmm. for me because then my attention was able to turn from how can I like make my body look more like that so I can be something that I'm not called to be to okay God then tell me what you created this five foot five (laughs) not model like structure for (laughs) right Mm -hmm. tell me what you had in mind Mm -hmm. and I think that's that's um that's freeing Mm -hmm. beautiful I love it I love it. Tiffany Joe Baker. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Tell everyone where they can connect with you. Maybe there's someone listening today that wants to work with you. They're like, yeah, I need help. What's my dream? (laughs) Help me birth. Yes. So how do they find you? How do they work with you? Find me online, Instagram, and Facebook at Tiffany Joe Baker. And my website's tiffanyjoebaker.com. Awesome. Thanks so much for being on the show today. Thank you, Heather. And thank you for watching today, or thank you for listening today. I hope something in today's episode has helped you stop comparing and start living. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Compared to Who show, part of the Spark Media Network, now on the Edify podcast app. If you don't have the Edify app, run, don't walk to your podcast store and grab it for great inspirational podcasts. Oh, hey there, before you go, if something from today's show blessed you, may I ask a huge favor, leave a review on your favorite platform. Seeing your five-star reviews is a huge encouragement to me. Not sure how to do it? You can go to compare to who.me slash podcast, scroll to the bottom, and you'll find all the information. And while you're at compare to who.me, check out some of the more than 500 articles on there about body image, comparison, all the things you're thinking about. Plus, you can take the free body image quiz. You can find out more about my books, or you can grab a time for a free 10 minute call to see if coaching is right for you. I'm so honored to be a part of your journey out of body image and comparison frustration. And I can't wait to hear how God is working to set you free.